Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our second to last academic success webinar series of the semester. Um, my name is Ashley Bray. I'm the Disability and Learning Skills Specialist for the School of Continuing Studies. And I have with me here today my colleague, Annie Balot. She is the Learning Skills Specialist for Maine Campus. Um, so thanks so much for joining us. Before we get started, just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. Um, as always, you can stay connected with us um, on social media, Facebook and Instagram. Facebook is at ARC Georgetown. Instagram is at ARC under slash Georgetown. Um, there we post updates around upcoming webinars, um, events, resources, tutoring hours. Um, so make sure you're following along and staying connected with us um, to know what's going on. Uh, lastly, before we really dive in today, we want to remind you about our last webinar of the semester. Um, as always, we end with a webinar on final exams, so we'll be talking through some final exam prep strategies, talking a little bit about how to manage your time organization-wise, um, some, you know, exam strategies for multiple choice, um, essay exams, all that good stuff. So we'll be doing that next Wednesday. We're a little off with our every two weeks because of the Easter break. Um, so we'll be doing that next Wednesday, April 24th at 1 p.m. Um, same Zoom link. Um, so hopefully you guys can join us. If you can't join us because of classes or other commitments, um, we always post these onto our website. And you can also go and start reviewing old webinars. Um, and we have a couple of old webinars on finals as well. So great prep as you're starting to kind of get into that study mode for the last few weeks of the semester. All right, so today we wanted to spend a little time talking about study groups um, and really what are the advantages of study groups and the strategies that make them most effective. Um, I know this is kind of a platform and resource that some of you guys use inherently because it's part of requirements of coursework. Um, but sometimes it's helpful just to understand what a study group is so that you can form them um, on your own, maybe outside of class, even if it's not a requirement to really um, dig into the material and make sure you're interacting with material in a way that makes sense and retaining that information. Um, and it's also a little bit of a great time saving strategy. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, and hopefully it will be helpful as we um, get into the last few weeks of the semester. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Ashley, for that introduction. So now we're going to dive into the benefits of study groups. And we've got two slides of these, so that really goes to show that there are a lot of good benefits from study groups that we want to hit home today. First and foremost, it presents the opportunity to learn from your peers and gain different perspective on material. So everyone understands and processes information differently. And when you're able to share insights and ideas with your peers, um, even peers in the classroom or peers that may have previously taken an exam or taken the class prior, it's really interesting to see everyone's different insights, um, different perspectives on the material, maybe the ways that they understand the material, and you can share that information um, amongst everybody, and it can help deepen your own understanding, and one of the main points is really clear up any confusion that you might have when it comes to certain material in the classroom. Thinking about when you're in a study group, it could help improve your own study regimen and the, your self-testing strategies, which Ashley and I love to talk about, but thinking about the ways that other peers um, learn the material, develop that rote memory, you know, use those memorization techniques to see if you can differentiate the way that you prepare for upcoming exams. Again, thinking towards finals, are there different ways that you can engage with the material? And can you learn that information from your peers during these study groups? It is a great way to increase your own comprehension of the material. If you're able to talk out loud with the material, um, that's going to help under, or help increase your own comprehension. Again, find those holes of information that you might need to clear up to um, ensure that you do as well as you can on upcoming exams. 
Some more benefits, just like I mentioned, identifying areas, areas of confusion. We would recommend that you immediately take these to your professor during office hours, toward if you have any recitations for your classes, um, if you can schedule some time with your TAs, take these areas of confusion or specific questions that you might have that came up during the study groups to a resource on campus. Maybe it's to the Math Assistance Center, or maybe it's to foreign language tutoring, to really um, ensure that you get that information solid, and as you begin prepping and studying for exams, you have all the solidified information going into that time period. It's also a great way to avoid falling behind in class, especially if you have a study group that is set up for the same time and every week or every two weeks you have a study group set up. It's a great way to avoid procrastination because there is a deadline, right? You're gonna be meeting with these peers on a weekly, bi-weekly basis and you have to come prepared to that. Maybe coming prepared is um, having notes that you can contribute to the discussion. Maybe it's coming prepared with exam questions that you can quiz each other with. So it's a really great way for you to stay on top of the course material, to review the material regularly, which is one of our biggest strategies when it comes to retention. You should be looking at material a little bit each day. But having these study groups set up is going to be a good way to stay on track with reviewing material a little bit each day. Another great benefit of study groups is it allows you and your peers to divide larger tasks and material into more manageable study chunks. So if you've got you know, four or six peers together looking at a certain material in one of your classes or looking at an upcoming exam, can you spread out the wealth and have everyone kind of take a part of that um, material in order to research really thoroughly and then share the insight during your study groups? Or if you have a presentation, a group presentation, making sure that everyone has their own task and their own part in the group is really important. And we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into how to make sure your study groups run effectively and making sure everyone's got a role and everyone understands the expectations of those study groups. But this is a really good benefit to think about. How can you make the material more manageable? Maybe it's spreading out the material amongst all of the peers so everyone be can become a master in certain areas, and then really um, you know, divide the information and the knowledge amongst your peers. It's also the last and most important thing, it's a ready-made support system. So you have peers that are in the same classes as you, that are learning the same, probably difficult material. So you have that support system that you can lean on in times of difficulty or frustration when it comes to studying. So that's just a snapshot at the benefits of a study group, but we think really, really important things to keep in mind about how study groups can really benefit you in your academic coursework. Great, thanks so much, Amy. Um, and to kind of piggyback off of that, we really wanna um, talk about how to develop an effective study group. Um, so one, keep the study groups between four and six people. Um, this tends to be kind of with the research the most effective. It helps minimize socialization um, and maximize individual contribution. Um, so that way there's a very clear idea of uh, who's responsible for what. Um, and it makes just the communication um, between group members a little bit more effective. So between four and six. Um, members should have a common goal towards learning and studying, right? You want to make sure that everyone who's in your study group is really there for the right reasons, um, that everyone's going to contribute equally. Um, so making sure that you define what those common goals are at the beginning, define those expectations when you're forming the study group is really, really important. Um, third, and this is a big one, study in environments with limited distractions, right? So we talk a lot about uh, recreating the testing environment when you're studying, um, and this should go the same for study groups. You want to make sure that you're in an environment that everyone can thrive in um, and that there's the resources there available. So if there's technology that you need, um, even just like a big poster board or whiteboard um, that you guys can write things out on, define goals, make sure that that that's available to really kind of put you in that headspace. Fourth one, limit your studying time to your group for two to three hours. Um, I think 
anything longer from two to three hours is when we start to see kind of a decrease in productivity and everyone kind of gets off of track. I know even Annie and I myself, when we have working sessions, really try to minimize um, our working sessions for two to three hours and then take a break and come back just to make sure that we're staying on focus and we have those goals in mind. Um, so keeping those goals up front, making sure that there's kind of an agenda, whether it's formalized or not, to make sure you're uh, hitting all the items you need to and you guys are all leaving with something. Um, and then lastly, organize sessions at the same time and location as possible. I think this is really important just for um, helping keeping a set schedule really does increase the efficiency and decreases the procrastination because that way you guys aren't always saying, well, where should we meet or we have to change locations because this doesn't work for us. So making sure that that's just something you start at the beginning, you uh, implement it and it really makes it a lot easier and more likely that you're going to go. And so kind of develop using all these um, tips to develop effective study groups are really helpful in setting the precedent that this is something that you guys can maintain throughout the semester. Um, and it just kind of becomes part of your regularly scheduled programming. All right. So Piggybacking off of that, um, here are some just important things that you should be doing at your first meeting, right? So your first meeting is going to look a little bit different than your follow-up meetings because there might be a little bit more organization, time management pieces to discuss. Um, and the first and most important every uh, point is to exchange contact information with everyone in the group and establish the best form of communication, um, whether that's texting or email or whatever it is, make sure that you guys establish how you're going to communicate. So making sure that you're sharing resources um, and planning upcoming meetings, um, find out what that is, make sure everyone's on the same page of it, um, and establish that from the get-go. Um, secondly, get to know one of each other. Take some time to ask each other's names, obviously majors, learning styles, um, understanding how people learn best and um, how they communicate is a really important piece of establishing effective study groups. Um, and again, this kind of goes back to what Annie was talking about and the benefits of study groups. It's okay if you have different learning styles because that diversity will help bring different perspectives to the group. Um, and you might be able to kind of see or engage in the material in a different way because one of your peers um, is maybe kind of coming at it from a different perspective. So kind of having those preliminary conversations is important and understanding how people kind of operate and study and engage with the material. Again, this goes back to some tips and tricks, but establish group expectation and ground rules, what it is that your common goals are. Um, is it, you know, what the expectation for every member is? We've all been in group projects where we felt maybe we've taken on more of the workload than others. So this is a really key piece of that to help manage that and make sure that someone feels like they're not doing more than someone else. Um, create a plan and set a time frame for completing each task. I think this is really, really important. Um, just as we would do with bigger projects um, or exams, make sure there's very clear expectations. And this should really be part of the discussions when you're talking about the expectations. When are things due? How are we kind of sharing that information with everyone? And making sure that time frame works for everyone, right? Because we all have different schedules. So making sure we're kind of fair and setting that. And then schedule your next meeting. Um, as we kind of said earlier, make this something consistent. So go ahead, spend the last five, 10 minutes of the group or the first five, 10 minutes of the group uh, session and put those in your calendar for the remainder of the month, the remainder of the semester. That way it's always there. It's on your schedule and it just becomes a consistent expectation as part of your week. All right. And finally, what should you be thinking about at follow-up meetings? Um, so a good place to start, I think, for most study groups is taking maybe five or 10 minutes off the top to evaluate progress on goals and tasks. Um, I think this is just as we encourage you to do with your schedule every day or our bigger projects. Take some time, see where you're at, and readjust as needed, right? Um, have 
incorporate feedback from your professor, TAs, or peers. So ideally, if these study groups are consistent, you should be going to class as <laughs> during the week before you're meeting for your study groups. And this is part of that evaluation process um, where you can kind of take that feedback from the professor um, and make those necessary changes. Um, set clear and manageable goals for the next session. Um, we have a great SMART goal worksheet on the ARC website that you can use, but making sure that you know um, what the expectation is coming into the next group session um, is a key part of, I think, each session and really helps, again, sets expectations um, and divvies up workloads in a very fair and meaningful way. And then finally, decide what materials and tasks you want to cover at each session each session and then things to consider when you're talking about this is is it relevant is it relevant to what you're doing in class is it what relevant to what your professor is talking about more importantly is it relevant to what's going to be on the exam do you understand the underlying concepts addressed in the material right this is really the place where you should be checking for knowledge you're checking for understanding right so are you getting it? If not, can you guys spend some more time making sure everyone's on the same page? Or does this require a follow-up with your professor or TA? Can you divide up key concepts and lectures into subgroups and divide the material amongst group members to teach, right? Teaching is a great way to make sure that you understand the material yourself, so don't shy away from that. It's just your brain engaging in the material in a different way, and it's really looking um, to see that you have a complete understanding um, and a mastery of what it is that you're learning. And then pinpoint follow-up questions again to answer and address in class. So maybe this is during class discussion. Sessions. Maybe it's after class with your faculty member, but these are some things that you really want to think about and maybe kind of incorporate it into each study group session. Okay, so we're going to spend some time and wrapping up our webinar with just talking about a few different st productive study group activities. Um, these are things that we already talk a lot about, but they're really great in group format um, and things that everyone can engage in. So the first one is reviewing your lecture notes. Um, if you've met with Annie or myself or listened to any of our webinars, you should probably be doing this already. This is something we talk a lot about, that reviewing your lecture notes should be um, part of your everyday routine. And it doesn't need to be a big thing. Um, it can be five to 10 to 15 minutes before or after class. But especially when you're in a study session, this is a great way to kind of check for understanding very quickly and make sure you're not missing anything big before the next group session. So meet regularly after class to share and compare notes. Um, and again, this doesn't have to be a huge time commitment and lift. It can just be a quick five, 10 minute session. And that way it's a good thing to make sure you're uh, not missing anything you might have heard in the lecture. Um, orally reviewing notes is a great way to learn the material and identify any questions you may have. So kind of going through in that study session um, and talking through concepts, talking through ideas, um, talking through problems, and we'll talk a little bit about problem solving later, but um, really talking that through and having that discussion um, really is helpful in checking your own understanding, but again, you're orally reviewing things and listening to others talk about it, it's giving your brain another chance to interact with the material. And again, you're really working towards that concept of mastery. Um, and then this is a great one. Use visuals to illustrate any concepts or problems. If you are a visual learner, kind of like myself, um, a great way to really go about this is using mind mapping. Um, and this is especially great when you're working in a group because everyone can kind of see it. Um, and with mind mapping, you're drawing the connections um, to different topics related to what you're discussing. And so you're able to kind of get your group members' perspective on maybe something that you didn't miss. Um, other great tools are outlines, and a lot of those resources are available on our website if you want to learn a little bit more about mind mapping and outlines and note taking. But reviewing lecture notes, if you don't know where to start with the study group, it's just kind of an easy, I think, common place for everyone to be on because everyone's got notes and it's going to be beneficial to everyone. Um, so some great strategies to think about for your next study group session. Yeah, thanks, Ashley. So that really is a good first step when it comes to study groups. And the next thing we want to talk about as a productive strategy is to um, review the reading. So after... 
um, each member has been has read the assigned reading discussion each section. Um, can you read a section and then talk through what types of questions come up? Maybe there are discussion questions um, at the back of the chapter or in the material that you can use as a point of discussion during your study group. So maybe everyone's not as solid on your notes or not as solid on the material, but using these points of discussion to really um, drive home or to initiate the study groups is a good idea. Um, thinking about how does the reading compare with your own notes or with your peers or even the lecture. So looking at the textbook or maybe it's articles that the professor has assigned and think about what are the main ideas that are going to be addressed in upcoming lectures or on an upcoming exam and do you have similar information and have you consolidated that information and like Ashley mentioned maybe you use some sort of online visual or a visual format as such as an outline um, thinking about how can you compare the material to make it um, comprehensive and then consolidate it to make sure it's something that can be used towards preparing for the exam could you even assign sections of the reading to different team members in order for everyone to summarize and then teach the material out loud um, to the group. Again, one of the best self-testing strategies and retention strategies is teaching material to somebody else. So that's a few things you can think about um, as a next step in your formation of a study group. Great, thanks so much, Annie. Um, so like I mentioned, sample problems is a great activity to be working on um, because when we're talking about self-testing strategies and mastering the material, it's really helpful to go one step um, above just reviewing your notes. So um, besides just reviewing, how are you interacting and applying those concepts and that material into real life situations? And this is really helpful, especially as you're preparing for exams. So work on these sample problems independently and in groups. Maybe there's some great sample problems from your professor from the back of the book, but assign a couple of them. Maybe it's just one or two. It doesn't have to, again, be this big thing, but kind of look at those, work on those individually, and then maybe you bring it back to the group and discuss your different approaches because there might be something that one of your group members saw but you'd miss or vice versa. So this is a great way to kind of compare how you guys are looking at problems think through your approach when you're working on these either at home for homework or during exams and making sure that you're again you're feeling confident with material and sample problems is a great way to help build up some of that confidence and then to take it a step further write a list of steps for completing the problem and it takes turns explain turns explaining how to solve the problems right um, as Annie said, teaching concepts to others or talking about it with others is another wonderful self-testing strategy and really making sure that you are understanding the material um, and that you're, again, feeling comfortable and confident with what it is that you're learning. And then, you know, always, maybe you don't have time to really spend a whole session diving into um, the nitty gritties of problems, but decide on a few problems to work on independently just to confirm the understanding and then check back in. Maybe it's through email, maybe it's through text, but just to have that space of reassurance and support to check in to make sure that you're on the right track or that you need to kind of adjust and be a little bit more flexible with your approach. Again, that's really what the study group is for. And I think one thing to note, Ashley, is one of the main self-testing strategies that I talk with students about is predicting questions that are going to appear on future exams. So this really falls directly in line with that. Maybe each group member comes to a study group with predicted questions that maybe are similar in nature to ones that they've seen on previous exams. And maybe you swap them with your other group members, right, to see, okay, is my understanding solidified and, or can I... Um, apply the information that I know to a peer's questions and vice versa. So I think that really is a, is a wonderful productive strategy and thinking about how can you maybe use this during your study groups is a really good idea. Yeah, I think that's a great strategy, Annie. Um, and again, it really helps you build towards more confidence and being a little bit more comfortable in that exam environment, especially when you're not expecting the questions.
Okay, so another one to think about is, of course, exam prep. So thinking specifically about an upcoming an exam, an upcoming final that you might have, and is there a way that you can assign each of your peers or team members with certain sections um, on an upcoming assessment to review, and then again, our favorite thing to teach to the study group. So thinking about, are you given a review sheet, or is there some sort of guideline that the professor or TA has given that you can use as a way to divide the material, and again, everyone can um, teach each other during those study group sessions. Um, maybe each team member is able to create a study guide in their own format. Maybe it's more of a visual process or a visual outline. Maybe some people can create um, using an online study guide such as Quizlet or even using Anki, which is the same, similar to Quizlet, using online flashcards and online um, quiz templates. So thinking about how can you differentiate, how can you use this really great strategy and divide it amongst the group so that everyone can take ownership over certain sections and then that when you all come together, that material can be shared amongst um, the group. And just like we mentioned on the previous slide, formulating sample test questions and taking practice exams during or similar to um, test conditions is going to be a great thing to think about too. Are there previous semester exams that the professor has provided you that you can practice um, your test taking strategies prior to going into the real exam or the final exam? Um, coming up with sample test questions like we just mentioned, again, something to definitely think about and how can you incorporate that into your future study groups. Great, and we just want to end on a note about future benefits of study groups. So very effective. Um, we encourage you to form them and use them as a resource while you are still in school. But you know, working with your peers in a study group really kind of gives you the opportunity to improve your people skills, um, which is really helpful if you're looking into math truth programs or just professional life after college. You're going to find yourself working with others in similar group dynamics. Um, it is true. We still do this to this day. And so being able to kind of navigate different personalities, navigate problems, and really collectively identify solutions is a really, really great skill you have um, to have. So study groups really kind of gives you that space and that opportunity to cultivate those skills, um, work through those difficulties, and really practice your collaboration and communication abilities. Um, and moreover, it's just a really great resource and it's helpful to, you know, know that other people are in, in it with you um, and are maybe struggling through or getting frustrated with uh, classes <laughs> just as you are. Um, and it, it's a great time kind of management strategy as well because it's a commitment that you have. You're able to really look at the material from different perspectives. So just lots and lots of benefits in the present and in the future. So if you're not already in a study group, it might be something you want to consider, especially as you move towards finals. It's a great tool then um, to kind of help manage finals time, um, but also something to implement in future semesters. All right, so that wraps it up for today on study groups. Um, as always, if you have feedback, you can um, provide that to us in the feedback survey, https colon backslash backslash tinyurl.com backslash arc webinar feedback. Um, so we would love to hear from you. Um, we wish you all luck as you guys are wrapping up the last couple of days of classes. We hope everyone has a wonderful break that starts on Thursday, I believe. Um, and we hope to see you guys all back here um, next Wednesday, April 24th at 1 p.m. for our last webinar of the semester um, about finals exams. So come prepared. Um, we're going to talk through some strategies to help you make this stressful time a little bit easier. So everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.